these this these conversations of inclusion, these conversations of diversity, are void of structural changes, then they're meaningless conversations. You know, there's a there's a habit of taking individuals, and I think you know this this whole thing of inclusion and diversity falls within the framework of neoliberalism, where you take you take a person like great book out there that deals with this subject and I'm, I'm i'm using their example actually you take a person like hillary clinton and you project her as the you know uh, an example of the fruits of feminism or you take the election of barack obama in 2008 and you present him as the culmination of dr king's dream for social equality and so while they are they've reached success you know in high political office and they have lucrative careers as the faces of uh, inclusion, millions of people, black people, women are incarcerated, millions suffer from poverty, millions are displaced, right? So until this, until inclusion involves structural changes to where everybody benefits, then it's just, it's a smoke screen, it's meaningless conversations. Mm. So I would say no, um, and, and you said something in your question or in your you know, question and response that they haven't experienced what they've been promised. And as long as you haven't been experienced what you've been promised, you can't really have a serious conversation about inclusion and diversity. Mm. You know, and, that, and that's just my humble opinion, whether it's the NBA not hiring enough black coaches, you know, not hiring enough black uh, strength and conditioning coaches, not hiring and ha having enough black owners. Mm. you know, in the league. You can't really talk about inclusion. And, you know, there's just really, you know, there's just this history. I think uh, uh, we have to look at also the question of what we're being included into. Right. You know, there's this uh, lady that wrote, a uh, lady and I think I can't remember, Eli Massey and Nat, uh, I, I forget her name. Yes, uh, uh, they wrote this article, The Violence of Inclusion, mm. and how we can't talk, you know, if we're talking about inclusion, and, and, and I took this down as, as a note because I think there's an emphasis on the visibility, and it often comes at the, uh, being visible, but it often comes at the expense of uh, not having a sensible uh, analysis of the institutions. And mm -hmm. she said something that was, that was uh, quite interesting, and, and I wrote it down just because we, in, in, talk, in, talk, in terms of analyzing the institutions we're asked to be included in, she said that given the brutal, and take military, for example, she says, given the brutal history of the U.S. military action, we also have to ask important questions about the meaning of participating in unjust institutions. Singling out the issue of inclusion without examining the institution itself produces morally incoherent stances. And it reminded me of the verse in the Quran where Allah says he didn't put in the human being two hearts. Mm. You can't be for justice and injustice at the same time. Yeah. But she goes on to say that it can be it can be akin to asking, should women be allowed to serve in death squads? Is the mafia unfairly ethnocentric? Uh, how can you racially diversify the board of Goldman Sachs? And she says in each instance, discussing the question requires the acceptance of the institution. Yes. Right. So. To answer that question, <laughs> I mean, when you're dealing with that, if there's no structural changes and if the institutions that we are trying to be included in and diversified with are unhealthy institutions, right, then one, it's not healthy to be included in those things. And two, it's not in true inclusion and diversity if, if there's no structural changes that benefit the majority. Right.